hope that you and your families are doing very well today. Um, you know, we're hearing so much about um, the pandemic and, you know, there are certain areas that have, you know, received spikes. And I know that with our children and, um, you know, going back to school and to universities, colleges, that, you know, there is great concern. And I, I just want to encourage you to continue to be vigilant. Um, we're not out of the waters yet, yes? We're still in the midst of the pandemic. Let us be careful. Let's follow those safety measures and um, and to be safe, yes? Um, whilst, of course, um, encouraging each other and those around us, yeah? Uh, let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for this, a brand new day, for your loving kindness towards us. Lord, how you, it's just amazing, you make us feel so special. Um, Lord, I, I, I just love about you that you reach people on the fringes, you know, people that maybe other folks would sort of overlook or, or, or turn their nose at or walk onto the other side of the road just to avoid, um, but you do not do that. You come direct, you, you, you seek to save all your children and you help us to understand that no matter who we are, you understand our, our suffering, you understand our joys, our sorrows, those things that concern us and that we wish we could do so much about, but sometimes we feel so powerless. And I pray that as we have come to meditate upon your holy word, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, for we want to know you. Lord, and um, you know that that which we know about you we absolutely love and we just want to drink deep we want to know you more and more each day for ourselves we want to shine for you we want to love like you love and reach out like you reach out and so please Lord allow your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth speak to us Lord for we love to hear your sweet voice we ask this in Jesus holy and blessed name amen well, saints, let us um, say our text together, shall we? John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place that I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Powerful words, yeah? Powerful words, and I praise God for this wonderful, reassuring promise, you know, that God is with us, that we don't have to be troubled, even when confronted with that which we'd rather not face. We can rest in his loving arms. We can find that assurance that we crave. And we're going to continue going through that genealogy in Matthew. We stopped by um, um, verse 5 yesterday. Um, I want to read verse 5. It says, um, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Um, Obed, the father of Jesse and Jesse, the father of King David. Wow. <laughs> David was a father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Well, let's stay. <laughs> let's just stop right there, shall we? <laughs> if you want scandal, this is scandal, yes? Um, they could have simply put, um, you know, Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba. But no, there's an intention here. And the intention is, by um, mentioning Uriah's name, it's to bring attention to um, this adulterous liaison between David and Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. And, you know, the reality is it, it occurred at a time when David should have been out at war with his man. He should have been out at war. 
it was a time when, when the kings went out to war with their troops and David was meant to go to war but for some reason he decided that he would relax himself this warrior of God this mighty man of valor decided to relax himself take his ease and send his troops to fight after all he was the king and as a king he was at liberty to do that so he thought but you know the the, the reality is that oftentimes you know the saying goes that an idle mind is the devil's playground and um, as David was there relaxing in his home enjoying the luxuries of royalty um, he happened to be standing maybe on his balcony and he looked and in the evening he noticed this amazingly beautiful woman that was taking a bath now in that those days that's what you did you took it outside yeah and any um, gentleman would have turned away and walked right back to where they had come from but not David. David looked once and maybe he looked twice and, and, and the look was one that was a lingering look and as he lingered and he, he, he took in what he um, was looking at, the beauty of this woman, he was mesmerized and then the thought processes went from what a beautiful woman to I must have her. And you know, this is what we have to be so careful of. It's usually at times of ease, times when we're just kind of, you know, just relaxing ourselves, enjoying our lives, that we end up falling into a pit. Yeah? Um, you know, the unexpected often confronts us and we have to decide in a split moment what it is that we will do. How will we respond? Now this man of God, he knew, um, you know, God. He loved God with all his heart, his mind and soul. But at this moment in time, uh, his God was at the, the back of his mind did not feature as he was transfixed on this beautiful sight before him. Before he knew it, he was sending for messengers to go to her, to invite her to his place. And when she came, they slept together. Yeah? They slept together. And, you know, she went back to her home, but it wasn't long before he heard that she was expecting a child for him. Problem was that Bathsheba was married to Uriah and Uriah was one of David's faithful soldiers. And David tried, tried to conjure up a plan where he would invite um, Uriah back home, Uriah would go and sleep with his wife and end of story he would think the babe was his. The problem was that Uriah was more faithful than David. And, and so whilst David tried his best, even getting him drunk um, so that he could go and sleep with his wife, um, Uriah refused. He could not go and enjoy anything um, of the pleasures of, of even marriage whilst he knew that the, 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 the troops of Israel were there risking their lives in battle. And so Uriah was actually a more righteous man than David at that moment in time. He was exhibiting all those qualities of a man of God. Well, David realizes that there's no way that he can cover his tracks, if not this way. And so he resorts to plan B. Plan B, um, you know, was actually a matter of Uriah returning back to the front line delivering his death sentence to Joab who puts him on the front line where he meets his death and David thought that he had gotten away with it but when Nathan, Nathan the prophet turns up at his door a year later he realizes that God saw everything and that God was disgusted and from this comes the most amazing psalm, Psalm 51, a psalm of repentance. He confesses his sin, 
and he's so, you know, he pleads with God, have mercy on me, creating me a new heart. Yeah, he gets to, you know, he says, listen, I, I'm born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I need you. Yeah, I'm dependent on you for life. And I praise God that he was forgiven. But in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, there's an alluded, you know, this story is alluded to in this text. Yes, at verse seven, Solomon, sorry, um, yes, sorry, verse six. Um, David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Yeah, it was there. And our God forgives that their child would die, but Solomon would be the second child to them. And that child will be blessed abundantly. Yeah? So we may have, you know, um, certain things that have happened in our lives that we are ashamed of, that we would not want anyone to know. But you know what God is saying? It's okay. I forgive you. I cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You are now whole before me. And the story may yet be there, but it's there to help others to see that there's hope for them, just as there's hope for you. And this is the most beautiful thing about this genealogy. God is saying, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you've done. I want to save you. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for this amazing account. Oh my word, Lord, this is something that we, I mean, humanly speaking, I would never have included this, but Lord, you are God and you know your plans. You know what you want to do for us. You know what you want to do in us. And I thank you that you did not hide this, but you put it right there to help us to see, listen, you may have scars, we may have regrets, we may have all kinds of things, but we do not have to hide anything from you because you see it all. And you're still able to reach us and you want to reach us right where we are. You want to cleanse us. You want to hold us tight. You want to come in right into our space and say, you know what, child? I know what you've done, but I, I, I want to make you whole if you will permit me. And I thank you for that, dear Father. Continue to be with all of your children. You know, there are some people that are, are dying inside because they're reliving scenes in their lives that they, they can't get out of their minds. They can't believe that they would do such things. But I'm praying, Lord, wherever they are, that you will reach out to them, that you will hold them tight. Lord, that you will help them to realize that they have a future in you. Lord, that they are forgiven, you know, in Jesus' name. And so, dear Father, Hold each and every one of your children. Anoint us from the crown of our heads to the very sole of our feet. And Lord, yeah, I pray that on that day when we shall see you face to face, Lord, it's, it's going to be an amazing day. Keep us, Lord, faithful until then. For I ask this in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Well, saints. <laughs> It does get sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. I praise God for who he is. I hope that you have a truly wonderful day. God bless you.